good morning students in uh, today's lecture we are going to the new topic we are going to discuss the new topic and that is last topic of our syllabus and that is the lichen the first of all regarding the introduction of the lichens that means in this slide we are going to discuss what is meant by the lichens the lichens these are the small group of the furious plants and these lichens these are made up of algal and the fungal components and these algal and the fungal components these are living together in the intimate symbiotic relationship the algal component it is referred as the phycobiont and the fungal component it is referred as the mycobiont though the lichens these are made up of uh, both algal and the fungal component the plant body it neither resembles algae nor fungi okay though it is made up of the algal component and the fungal component it is neither resembling the algae nor the fungi thus the lichen it is the association of a fungus and the algal photosynthetic symbiont resulting in a stable thallus of the specific structure okay thus the lichen it is an association of a fungus and an algal photosynthetic symbiont resulting in a stable thallus of the specific structure the lichens have the composite thalloid structure composite thalloid structure means the plant body of the lichen it is not differentiated into the true root stem and the leaves okay because the lichens these are made up of um, symbiotic association of algae and the fungi and that's why the lichen the plant body it is a thalloid structure which is not differentiated into the true root stem and the leaves then another important thing regarding the lichen is that the growth of the lichens it is very extremely slow okay the growth of the lichen it is very extremely slow and they can survive high temperature and the dry conditions for the long time okay it is the important character of the lichen the growth is very extremely slow they can survive high temperature and dry conditions for the long time then the lichens these are very sensitive to the air pollution okay these are very sensitive to the air pollution means suppose there is a one region where the air pollution is a very air pollution is maximum then in that particular region then you will not find the any species of the lichens and a region where the uh, species of the lichens are generally reported then it is clear that the air pollution is less in that particular area that's why we are saying that is the lichens these are very sensitive to the air pollution okay and that's why these are used for the indicator these are used as an indicator to the air pollution okay that is about the lichen then the distribution of the lichen there are about 400 genera and 1600 species of the lichens these are reported from all over the world okay up till now about 400 genera and 1600 species of the lichens which are widely distributed in most part of the world are reported generally the species of the lichens these are growing on the bark of trees dry logs of the woods bare rocks and other similar situations some of the species even grow in the arctic and antarctic regions and others occurs on the sea shore then abundant species of the lichens these are found in the eastern himalayan region some of the common species which are reported from the india these are cladonia aggregata graphis duplicata then graphis scripta gyrophora cylindrica hematoma punicium usnia aspera and usnia dicotoma okay these are the some of the common species of the lichens which are reported from the india that is about the uh, distribution of the lichens and now we are going to discuss in this slide the nature of association okay just we have discussed the algae it is made up of two component algae and the fungi and both these components these are living in the symbiotic association the algal component it is called as the phycobiont while the fungal component it is referred as the mycobiont 
okay here the algal component phycobiont of the lichen it belongs to the chlorophyce or the cyanophyce okay the algal component which is involved in the formation of the lichen it mainly belongs to the chlorophyce chlorophyce it is uh, popularly called as the um, uh, green algae and the cyanophyce which is popularly called as the blue green algae while the fungal component in the lichen belongs to the basidiomycetes or the ascomycetes the interrelationship between both the components usually considered to be the symbiotic okay why we are saying that is the algal component and the fungal component these are living in the symbiotic association because here algae these are having the photosynthetic pigments that means with the help of these photosynthetic pigment they can perform the photosynthesis and they synthesize the food material which is used by both algal and the fungal component okay algae synthesize the food and it is provided to the fungal component and in exchange of the food water and minerals these are made available to the alga by the fungal component okay the food it is derived from the algal component by the fungal component and fungal component in exchange of food provides water and minerals to the algae okay these are living in mutually benefited relationship okay some of the uh, some of the botanists believe that the algae and fungi that is these are living in mutually benefited relationship okay apart from providing the water and minerals to the algae the fungal component protects the algal component from the desiccation and the heat okay that is apart from providing the water and minerals to the algae fungal component it protects the algal component from desiccation and heat okay however some of the worker believe that the fungal component has a partially or wholly parasitic relationship with the algal component okay that means that is these are believing that both the components that is these are not equally benefited from each other okay here the fungal component has the partially or wholly parasitic relationship with the algal component okay there are certain facts that is which is supporting this theory that is the hostoria of the fungi these are seen in the algal cells of the some lichens okay the hostoria of the fungi these are seen in the algal cells of the some of the lichens and the another important thing on separation the algal component of the lichen can live independently whereas the fungal component cannot survive okay these are the two most important thing that is which are proving that the fungal component has the partially or wholly parasitic relationship with the algal component okay which are the two factors the first one the hostoria of the fungi these are seen in the algal cells of the some lichens and the another one on separation if the algal and the fungal component these are separated from each other then the algal component of the lichen can live independently whereas the fungal component cannot survive okay according to the eighth another view although the association of both the component of the lichen it is symbiotic the fungal component shows the predominance over the algal component and the fungal component is a subordinate partner and such association it is referred as the helotism okay helotism h e l o t i s m what is mean by helotism here the association of both the components of the lichen it is symbiotic the fungal component shows predominance over the algal component and the fungal component is a subordinate partner and such association it is referred as the helotism okay that is all about the nature of association in the lichens okay then regarding the thallus morphology here we are discussing the external morphology or we can or we can say the structure of the thallus the plant body of the lichens is a thalloid 
okay we have discussed uh, the plant body of the lichen is a thalloid and it is irregular in the shape in the photograph you can see that is it is irregular in the shape and usually the structure or usually the thallus of the lichen it is a gray or grayish green in color it is gray or grayish green in color but some of the species of the lichens these are yellow or red or orange or brown in color okay thallus of the lichen it is gray or the grayish green in color but some of the species of the lichens these are yellow red orange or brown in color okay then the there are three basic types of the lichens okay the three types of the lichens have been recognized on the basis of their external morphology or we can say the external structure the first one it is the crustose lichen second one it is the polios lichen and the third one it is the cuticos lichen depending upon the thallus morphology there are three types of the lichen three basic types of the lichen here the first one you can see the crustose lichen and these are the photographs of the crustose lichen what is what are these crustose lichen these are encrusting lichens with an inconspicuous thin and flat thallus which is firm in texture okay which is firm in texture the thallus is very closely adhered or it is sticked to the substratum and it provides the crust like appearance okay as it is very closely adhered to the substratum and it provides the crust like appearance and that's why these lichens these are referred as the crustose lichen it is wholly or partially embedded in the substratum and in the latter case that is whenever it is completely embedded in the substratum only the fruiting bodies these are visible above the surface of the substratum okay that is about the crustose lichen then the second one the folios lichen folios lichen those lichens are flat and these are leaf like okay folios means that is it is looking like a leaf here in this photograph you can see that is it is appearing as a leaf like structure okay folios lichen means these lichens are flat with the leaf like and lobed thallus here you can see these are the leaf like and the lobed thallus they are attached to the substratum with the help of the rhizoid like structures and these rhizoid like structures are called as the rhizines okay these rhizoids like structure are called as the rhizines r h i z i n e s okay these are called as the rhizines then the third type of the lichen that is called as the fruticoles lichen okay here you can see in this photograph these are the fruticoles lichen fruticoles lichen these are shrubby lichens with the well developed shrub like cylindrical and branched thallus okay fruticoles lichen these are shrubby lichens with well developed shrub like cylindrical and branched thallus they grow erect or hang from the substratum okay in this photograph you can see that is these are growing erect these are the erect lichens and here you can see that is these are hanging these are hanging from the substratum that's why we are seeing the fruticoles lichen they grow erect or hang from the substratum the plant body it is attached to the substratum with the help of the basal mucilaginous disc okay these fruticoles lichen these are attached to the substratum with the help of the basal mucilaginous disc okay then just we have discussed the external structure of the um, thallus of the lichen and now regarding the internal structure the internal structure of the lichen it is very complex okay the internal structure of the lichen it is very complex the thallus it is composed of the algal and the fungal component okay as the lichen it is made up of two components algal component and the fungal component the internal structure of the lichen it is very complex and such type of the thallus it is known as the consortium c o n s o r t i u 
M. Okay, such type of thallus which is made up of uh, two different components, algal component and fungal component, it is referred as the consortium, C-O-N-S-O-R-T-I-U-M. In the advanced uh, folios lichen, the four distinct regions can be recognized in the vertical section. Okay, in the advanced folios lichens, the following four distinct regions can be recognized in the vertical section. Okay, here you can see the upper cortex. Okay, four vertical region here you can see the upper cortex, below the upper cortex, then algal layer, then medulla region and here presents the lower cortex. Okay, the first of all regarding the upper cortex, it is the outermost thick and protective zone of the thallus. It is composed of compactly interwoven fungal hyphae. Okay, here you can see it is made up of compactly, um, it is made up of compactly interwoven fungal hyphae. The hyphae, these are arranged at a right angle to the surface of the thallus. There are usually no intercellular spaces between the hyphae. And if the intercellular spaces are present, these are filled with the gelatinous substances. In some of the lichens, there are many irregularly arranged breathing pores on the outer surface. And these pores help in the gaseous exchange. Okay. That is about the upper cortex which is made up of the fungal hyphae and which is these fungal hyphae these are compactly arranged in the upper cortex and there is a presence of the specialized structures which are called as the breathing pores which are helping in the gaseous exchange okay that is about the upper cortex Okay, the first layer upper cortex which is outermost layer. Then just below the upper cortex the another layer is present and that is layer which is referred as the algal layer. Okay, as the name suggests the algal layer it occurs just below the upper cortex and this layer is also known as the gonidial layer. Okay, gonidium cells these are the reproductive cells of the alga. And that's why this layer here, this layer which is present just below the upper cortex, it is referred as the algal layer. It is also referred as the gonidial layer because gonidia, these are the reproductive cells of the alga. The algal cells remains embedded in between the network of loosely interwoven fungal hyphae. In some of the species, the algal cells and the fungal hyphae are distributed more or less uniformly throughout the thallus and such species are known as the homoisomerous. Okay, homoisomerous. Homoisomerous means whenever that is the algal component or the algal uh, cells and the fungal hyphae, these are these are uniformly distributed and uniformly distributed in the thallus and such species these are homoisomerous. Okay, here you can see this is the homoisomerous. These are uniformly distributed or there are separate layers of the algae and here the fungal layer and such a structure it is said to be the homoisomerous. On the other hand, in some of the members, the Mm, there is a presence of the distinct layers of the algae and such structures are known as the heteromerous. Okay, whenever the distinct layer are there, they said to be the heteromerous thallus. Okay, then some of the common green and the blue green algae, these are found in the lichens and these are the species of the protococcus Pleurococcus, Cladophora, then Trauboxia, then Quintifolia, and the Nostoc, Gliocapsa, and the Rivularia. Okay, that is about the algal layer. Then regarding the medulla, medulla it is the central part of the thallus and it is made up of loosely interwoven fungal hyphae with the large spaces in between them. Okay, this is the medulla region. Medulla region here you can see clearly. It is made up of loosely arranged interwoven fungal 
high P. Okay. And as these are loosely arranged, there is a presence of the large air spaces or the intercellular spaces are present between them. Okay, that is about the medulla, which is the central part of the thallus. And then there is a presence of the further layer, which is called as the lower cortex. Lower cortex, this zone, it is composed of the compactly arranged hyphae, which run parallel or perpendicular to the surface of the thallus. Okay, the lower cortex, it is composed of compactly arranged hyphae, which run parallel or perpendicular to the surface of the Thallus. Some of these hyphae become specialized and extend downward from the lower surface of the cortex and these helps in the attachment of the thallus to the substratum and these are specialized hyphae, these are called as the rhizines. Okay, here you, you can see the rhizines. Rhizines, these are nothing but uh, uh, specialized hyphae, that is, which are growing in downward directions and which are helping in the attachment of the thallus to the substratum. And these are referred as the rhizines. The internal structure of the crustose lichen is also more or less to the folios lichens. Okay, here this is the photograph which is showing the internal structure of the folios lichen and the internal structure of the crustose lichen is also more or less similar to the folios lichens. The lower cortex does not occur in the fruticose lichens due to their cylindrical structure and medulla forms the central part of the axis. Okay, the lower cortex is completely absent in the fruticose lichen okay that is about the internal structure of the thallus in the lichens then regarding the reproduction in the lichens the lichen reproduces by the vegetative asexual and the sexual reproduction okay the lichen they reproduces by the vegetative sexual and the asexual reproduction and here the first method of the reproduction in the lichen it is the vegetative reproduction Vegetative reproduction, it takes place by the two means. The first one, it is the fragmentation. Fragmentation, it takes place by the accidental injury where the thallus may be broken into the fragments. And each of the fragment, each of the part, it is capable of growing normally into the new thallus. Okay, that is how the fragmentation takes place. Okay, due to the certain accidental injury, the thallus of the lichen, it breaks down into the several uh, fragments and each of the fragment it develops into the new thallus provided it contains both the algal and the fungal components okay provided that fragment must have both the algal and the fungal component then the another method of the vegetative reproduction by the death of the older parts the older region of the basal part of the thallus dies causing separation of some lobes or the branches and each one grows normally into the new thallus. Okay, that is how the vegetative reproduction takes place in the lichens by fragmentation and by death of the older parts. Then the another method of the reproduction in the lichen, it is the asexual reproduction. Asexual reproduction, it is of common occurrence in the lichens. The sexual reproduction it is very common in the lichens and some of the common methods of the asexual reproduction in the lichens these are the first one it is the formation of the soridium okay here a and b that is these are the soridium s o r e d i u m the both structures that is these are of the soridium that is the by which the asexual reproduction takes place in the lichen the small bird like outgrowths these are formed in the lichen thallus and these small bird-like outgrowths, these are called as the suridia. Okay, some small bird-like outgrowths known as the suridia, these are developed on the surface of the thallus. A suridium contains one or few algal cells closely developed by the fungal hyphae. Okay, here you can see that these are the algal cells and these are enclosed or surrounding these algal cells, there is a presence of the fungal hyphae. 
okay the soridia form a granular layer of the grayish white color on the surface of the thallus they are detached from the thallus by the impact of wind or the rain okay by the impact of wind and the rain these are soridia these are get detached from the parent body and then then they develop in an organized manner in the spatial pustule like areas and then these are known as the soridia the soridia germinate on the suitable substratum and they will form the new thallus okay the soridia whenever they get the favorable environmental condition and the suitable substratum they will germinate and they will then get developed into the new thallus of the lichen that is about the soridium then the these are the soridia that is how exactly the outgrowths are formed and in these outgrowths or the bird like structures the soridia are developed it is a simple structure that is the algal cells these are enveloped by the fungal hyphae they these get detached from the parent body and they will germinate and then they will get they will get developed into the thallus of the lichen then another method of asexual reproduction in the um, lichen it is the formation of the cephalodium okay c e p h a l o d i u m formation of the cephalodium okay how uh, what is mean by the cephalodium and how exactly these are developed in the lichens cephalodium these are the small wart like structures which are formed on the surface of the thallus okay this is the thallus of the lichen and here this is the small wart like structure which is formed on the surface of the thallus and this wart like structure is referred as the cephalodium okay one of the characteristic feature of the cephalodium is that its algal and the fungal components differ from that of the thallus okay it's algal and the fungal component these are completely different from that of the thallus it is due to the fact that the cephalodia these are developing on the younger part of the thallus from the soridia of some other species okay cephalodia these are actually the structures which are developed from the soridia of some other species and that's why that is these cephalodium these are having the completely different algal and the fungal component from that of the thallus and hence the cephalodium may be regarded as the sterile thallus of some other lichens okay it is believed that these cephalodium these are developed by the germination of the soridia on the another lichen thallus and that's why this cephalodium may be regarded as the sterile thallus of some other lichens okay then the another method of asexual reproduction it is the formation of the isidium okay formation of the isidium i s i d i u m isidia these are small stalked grayish black coral like outgrowths which are developed on the upper surface of the thallus okay here you can see that is these are the small coral like outgrowths which are developed on the external Mm, or on the upper surface of the thallus okay these are stalked these are small these are grayish black color the isidium has an outer cortical layer enclosing the algal and the fungal component okay here you can see that is the this is the cortical layer which is uh, protecting this isidia and inside this cortical layer there is a presence of the algal and the fungal component okay it is usually constricted at the base and easily detachable from the parent thallus okay here you can see that is these are constricted at the base and that's why it is very easy to get detached from the parent thallus it will germinate under the favorable environmental condition and forms the new thallus of the lichens okay in addition to the propagation these isidia these also help in the increasing the photosynthetic surface of the thallus they vary in the shape that means they may be rod like or coral like or scale like or even these are cigar like okay 
Then some of the lichens, they develop the flask shaped pycnidia. P Y C N I D I A. Okay. Apart from the formation of suridia, then cephalodium, then isidium, some of the lichens also develop the flask shaped pycnidia, which forms the pycnidiospores. Okay, in these pycnidia, these are a certain bag like structure, and inside this sac like structure, the specialized spores known as the pycnidiospores, these are developed, and these pycnidiospores then they will get dispersed into the environment, and then whenever they get uh, favorable environmental conditions, and uh, that is these uh, pycnidiospores on germination, that is they will develop the fungal hyphae. And this fungal hyphae will come in contact of a suitable alga. They will develop into the new lichen body. Okay. That is the some lichens. They will develop the flask shaped pycnidia inside these pycnidia. Inside this sac like structure. The specialized spores known as the pycnidiospores are developed. These pycnidiospores will germinate. They will develop the fungal hypha. And this fungal hypha when come in contact with the suitable alga, they will develop into the new lichen body. Sometimes the fungal hyphae break to form the oidiospores. Okay. These are the different methods of asexual reproduction in the lichens. Okay. Then the sexual reproduction in the lichens. Sexual reproduction in the lichens. In lichen, the process of the sexual reproduction, it is performed only by the fungal components. Okay. In lichens, the process of sexual reproduction, it is performed only by the fungal component. The fungal component of most of the lichens belong to the class Ascomycetes and hence the sexual reproduction it is a similar as in the ascomycetes. Okay, the fungal component of most of the lichen it belongs to the class ascomycetes, and hence the sexual reproduction in the lichen is as in the ascomycetes, where the female sex organs these are known as the carpogonia. Okay, female sex organ these are known as the carpogonia. C A R P O G O N I A. The carpogonium, it is differentiated into the basal coiled ascogonium. Okay, here you can see this is the carpogonium. Okay, it's the carpogonium here. This is the clear structure of the carpogonium, which is a female sex organ. And it is differentiated into the two parts. Two parts, the, it is the a basal coiled structure. Here you can see the basal coiled structure, which is called as the proper ascogonium. Okay, which is called as the proper ascogonium and the elongated multicellular portion and this elongated multicellular portion, it is called as the trichogyne. Okay, a carpogonium, it is differentiated into the basal coiled ascogonium and here the elongated trichogyne. The, ascogon the ascogonium remains embedded within the algal layer of the thallus whereas the trichogyne projects over the surface of the thallus. Okay, in this photograph here you can see clearly the ascogonium. It is embedded into the algal layers while this elongated portion trichogyne that is it is slightly projected above the surface of the thallus. Okay, trichogyne it is slightly projected above the surface of the thallus. The male sex organs these are flask shaped structures okay male sex organs these are flask shaped structures and these are called as the spermatogonium okay these are flask shaped structure and these are called as the spermogonia s p e r m o g o n i u m here you can see a spermogonium male sex organ in the lichens it is referred as the spermogonium this is the structure of spermogonium this is the male sex organ which is flask shaped structure they form the spermatia okay here you can see they form the spermatia they form spermatia that is these are the non motile male gamete which are functioning as a non-motile male gametes okay these are non-motile and that's why these are referred as the spermatia okay the spermogonium it usually develops very close to the carpogonium 
this enables the spermatia to adhere to the projected part of the sticky trichobine okay generally these spermogonium male sex organ and uh, female sex organ carpogonia these are believed to be growing very close to the each other so that these uh, spermatia will reach to the um, projected part of the ascogonium which is referred as the trichogyne on dissolution on the walls between the spermatium and the trichogyne when that is this spermatia that is it come in close contact with this trichogyne, uh, trichogyne and on the dissolution of the walls between the spermatium and the trichogyne the nucleus of the spermatium migrates into the carpogonium through the trichogyne and the male nucleus it will fuse with the female nucleus which is present into that helical portion okay then the several branched ascogenous hyphae these are developing from the base of the fertilized ascogonium okay after fertilization what happens after fertilization the large number of the ascogenous hyphae will develop from the base of the fertilized ascogonium here you can see that is the large number of the sterile filaments ascogenous hyphae these are developing from the fertilized ascogonium the terminal or the penultimate binucleate cell of the ascogenous hyphae it will develop into the ascus okay here you can see the terminal cell of the ascogenous hyphae it will develop into the ascus okay it will develop into the ascus the two nuclei within the ascus fuse to form a diploid nucleus two nuclei within the ascus fuse to form the diploid nucleus the diploid nucleus first divides meiotically and then mitotically to form eight haploid daughter nuclei and thus each of the ascus it is having about eight haploid nuclei and each of the haploid nuclei it will get developed into the ascospore okay it will develop into the ascospore here you can count the number of uh, ascospores in the ascus that is about eight uh, uh, ascospores these are present per ascus okay then the assay remains enveloped by the paraphysis okay here this is the complete structure okay this is the complete structure of the fruiting body okay the assay remains enveloped by the paraphysis the somatic tissue surrounding the assay and the paraphysis forms the fruiting body surrounding tissue these are for surrounding tissue and the um, paraphysis these are forming the fruiting body which may be apothecium or it may be the perithecium okay it may be the perithecium or the apothecium okay in this photograph you can see it is the longitudinal section of the apothecium okay apothecium it is nothing but the fruiting body which is developed after the sexual reproduction in the lichen the ascospores these are very considerably in their the ascospores they vary considerably in their shape size structure and the septation they are high line and greenish or brown in color they are released gradually from the ascus the ascospore produces a hypha on germination and this hypha when comes in contact with the suitable alga forms the new lichen thallus okay the ascospores here you can see the ascospores which are present in the ascus they vary considerably in their shape size structure and the septation they are high line greenish or brown in color they are released gradually from the ascus the ascospores produces a hypha on the germination and this hypha when comes in contact with the suitable alga forms the new lichen thallus okay that is how the sexual reproduction in the lichen is accomplished and that is all about the life cycle of the lichens